Okay, today I would like to conclude the part on um, general abstract theorems on linear operators. So the, the next theorem of today is the following. The uh, so-called open mapping theorem. The statement is the following. Assume that uh, These are Banach spaces. Let uh, uh, L be linear and continuous. <coughs> and suppose also that it is bijective. So then, so in, let us denote by uh, the balls, the balls of, of radius. So the ball of radius one in E. Uh, let us denote it by B. And uh, B, uh, BF so let, let us choose also a radius, say R okay. centered at zero. Okay, then I want. I would like to say that uh, then I want to, to write here a, a, an inclusion, which is equivalent to say that uh, <coughs> L to the minus one, this is invertible, is continuous. What does it mean that L to the minus one is continuous? So this is L. This is L minus 1. So it says that uh, um, there exists a cause. So if I take a, a, a neighborhood of the origin here, then I can find a neighborhood of the origin here, which, which through L to the minus 1 is sent uh, here. So, uh, so there exists a constant, let me denote it by C, positive, such that B, uh, C, F is contained in L, B, E. Oh, use this notation for simplicity. Radius one. So there exists. So uh, if I fix uh, the ball here, B E one, hmm? this says that, uh, namely. L to the minus one BF of radius C is contained in BE. So given given a neighborhood of the origin here, or in this case just the ball of radius one, of course if I take another ball I can scale everything by lambda. Okay. So I can choose the unit ball here. And I find a small ball here such that through L minus 1, this small ball is, is sent in the given ball. Hmm? Uh, or uh, uh, since L is invertible, we can write it without even writing L to the minus 1. It is enough 
to write this. Is it okay? Is it clear, this statement? Uh, the notation is the ball of radius C uh, in the space F. Okay? So you see why it is called open mapping? Well, because the, the, if you take the unit ball, which is open, you take the image of the unit ball, then this is open because it contains a ball. Okay? Is it clear? So this, uh, on the right hand side, we have an open set because it contains a ball. But this is equivalent to say that the, the inverse is bounded, is continuous. Okay, so the statement is clear. Hmm? Uh, okay. So the proof, uh, let, me, uh, let me write here some preliminary lemmas. So lemma one, let me write it this, the, the points in the order so that uh, let uh, lambda be real number different from zero, then, and let, uh, okay, then let x be a Banach space, maybe. So let x be a Banach space. Then, given a subset of x, we have the following list. This, then, if a is symmetric, A bar is symmetric. If A is symmetric, the interior of A is symmetric. So I read it. So let X be a Banach space, let lambda be a non-zero number, real number, then for any subset of the Banach space, the closure of lambda A is lambda the closure of A. The, the interior of lambda A is lambda times the interior of A. If A is symmetric, what does it mean? It means that A is equal to minus A. Uh, then A bar is symmetric. And if A is symmetric, then the interior of A is also symmetric. This is, this is the first lemma. Uh, which will be useful in the proof. So the, the proof of this lemma is, so proof, well, point one and two uh, are a consequence of the fact that uh, the map, uh, if lambda is different from zero, then the map is a homeomorphism. which implies one and two. Let assume now that A is symmetric. Let us prove three. So if A is symmetric, this means that this is equal to this. Huh? Then, therefore, we have this. OK, but now it is sufficient to apply point 1 with lambda equal to minus 1. So with lambda equal to minus 1, this immediately gives that also a bar is symmetric. OK, and similarly, you can check the same argument using 2 
that also the interior of A is symmetric with the same argument. Okay? So this is lemma one. Um, Now, let me write down lemma 2 in the order. So, lemma 2 is uh, the following. If A, let, now let us change letter. If K is convex, then K bar is convex and the interior of K is convex. OK? OK, so uh, let us show point 1 here and point 2. So uh, if K is convex, take uh, two points, X and uh, uh, Y. And, we, and take two numbers lambda and nu in 0, 1, with, with sum up to 1, we have to show, to show that uh, lambda x uh, plus mu y belongs to k bar. OK? So what do we know? Uh, we know that. Uh, uh, x and y belongs to k bar. Therefore, uh, given any ball, we have that lambda, uh, we have that uh, x plus, say, any ball uh, belongs to k, Inter um, intersection k is empty, uh, and y plus u, any ball centered at the, at the origin. Eh? Intersection k is non-empty. Okay? This means that x and y belongs to the closure of k. Given any ball sent u, I, I have denoted it by u. Okay. Um, given any ball, we have this. What does it mean proving this? It means that we have to show we have to show that uh, lambda x plus mu y plus u intersection of k is non-empty. Is it OK? Hmm? So I repeat, given any uh, ball u, neighborhood of the origin in particular, uh, we know that uh, x and y are in the closure. Therefore, if I take a ball Send any ball centered at x, which is exactly as this expression, huh? and then this ball uh, does, does intersect k. And the same for this. We have to show that this is true. Therefore, we have to show that given any ball centered at this point, namely equivalently this plus this plus the ball, intersect k. Okay? Uh, so, fr from this, uh, we have that there exists u1 in u such that uh, x plus uh, u1 belongs to k. Huh? And from the second, uh, the second formula, this, it follows that there exists u2 in u such that uh, y plus u2 belongs to k. Hmm? Okay. Now it is enough to consider lambda x plus uh, u1. Now, since k is convex, this 
lambda times this plus mu times this is an element of k because k is convex. OK? Sorry? U. U. U is a subset of uh, X. Mm, so maybe I should write who is U. Sorry? So U, U is, a, is an. Uh, U is an arbitrary U is an arbitrary ball of X centered at zero. Okay. I use the notation U. Okay. So uh, by convexity, a convex combination of these two points must belong to K, capital K. Therefore, convex combination must belong to capital K. Huh? Mu? Why? Excuse me. You're right. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, then... Uh, therefore, let me write it like this, lambda x plus mu y plus lambda u1 plus mu u2 belongs to k. But now you see, uh, bo the ball is convex. Hmm? So uh, u1 and u2 are elements of the ball, but the ball has the special property to be convex. Therefore, this convex combination is still an element of the ball. Huh? Belongs to u because u is convex. And this exactly is equivalent to say that uh, this this. Hmm? What does it mean, this? That there is a point here such that this plus this belongs to K. And this point is this complex combination, OK? Uh, which, is a, which implies So, so, ah, no. so we, it remains to show the second part, maybe. I could leave this you as a homework, maybe. So the, 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 you should prove what is the second part. You should prove that the interior is convex. So given two points in the interior and given two numbers which sum up to one, a non-negative number, we have to show that this is in the interior. Is in the interior. So what does it mean that it is in the interior? There, there exists now. Now there exists a ball. Uh, now there exists u ball such that x plus u is contained in k. In k and y plus u is contained in k. with the same ball. 
hmm? in the convex set. So uh, now the claim is that lambda x plus mu y Right. Now you should show that lambda x plus mu y then x plus mu y plus u is contained in k. Well, this is essentially trivial, I mean, because, again, what does it mean, this? This means that for any u, you have that x plus small u belongs to k, and y plus small u belongs to k. Huh? Then now you take lambda x plus lambda x plus u plus mu y plus u. Huh? This is y, yeah? Then you take the convex combination of these two. This is an element of k, because k is convex. Huh? And it can also be written as follows. Lambda x plus mu y plus uh, x plus plus lambda u plus mu u hmm? plus u hmm? because the sum is equal to 1. Therefore, we have shown that for any u in u, this belongs to k. And this is equivalent to say that uh, this, okay? So now let us go to the proof. So once we have these two lemmas, let us go to the proof. In the proof, we will use the completeness of both E and F. Let us start with using the completeness of F. Step one, use completeness of F. Okay, and uh, um, we will show that uh, L of B has non-empty interior. <coughs> we'll first show that L of B has non empty interior, namely, there exists a positive constant that I denote by rho positive such that the ball is contained. Yes. Okay, so the first step consists in showing that this object here has non empty interior. Remember, uh, maybe I, I, have, I think that, yeah, BE. Is, ah, okay, you are right. I don't remember my notation. This is E, okay, of radius 1. Let me simply write it for simplicity. Let me, let me use this simple, simple notation. So this is B, okay? So the claim is that this has non empty interior, or equivalently, it contains a ball with positive radius. Hmm? Other, other questions? Yeah. Yes, in the proof of step one, we will use the completeness of F. I wish. Ah, we will show, sorry, show. 
we will show we will show that and now you will see how we will use complete resonance echo maybe you can already infer that once you see the interior of the closure something like the Baird's theorem uh, comes in mind uh, anyway So first uh, we recall that uh, the map is by assumption surjective in particular. Uh, therefore, uh, I can write F as the union of all L and B. Hmm? Okay. This is surjectivity, and, and also, obviously, it is the union of something which seems to be larger, but it is not, which is this, OK? Now, if by contradiction, Uh, L of B is empty, then, then the fold, then we have using the lemmas, the previous lemmas, what do we have? For any n positive, yes. Uh, yes. Um, no. I want to show that L B bar has non empty interior. So assume by contradiction it has empty interior. Okay? I want to show non empty. Eh? So, so assume instead it has empty interior. So the interior of this is empty. Sorry, so you, you, it was the interior missing. Yes, you're right. Then we have, so, um, uh, L on NB closure is equal to what? So it is equal to N LB closure. Huh? by lemma uh, one. Huh? No, sorry, this is, the, no, sorry, this is simply by, by the linearity, but, but by lemma one, this is equal to this, okay? Lemma one, so this is lemma one, this is simply linearity. Okay, uh, then, uh, Okay. This is closed, and therefore, now the interior of um, L and B is equal again using uh, lemma N interior of LB. OK? Uh, therefore, this implies that if this, is, if this is empty, then also this is empty for any n, n positive. Hmm? Uh, interior is empty for any n larger or equal than 1. 
which is a contradiction of uh, using bare theorem because we are writing the complete metric space F as a countable union of closed sets. Therefore, at least one of these closed sets has non-empty interior. Huh? Contradiction with bare. in F. Is it okay for up to now? Okay. So, uh, what we have shown is therefore that there exists so this has non empty interior, therefore it contains a ball. Now look at the statement. The statement is this. And we, this is not the statement. Why is not the statement? Because there is a closure. Other problems? No? Is it okay? contradicting there. Uh, because these are closed, of course. This is the reason why I add, so I, I have this equality. But in order to have a union of closed set, it is better to close it. No, non-empty interior. This is not like to say it is non-empty. It is non-empty interior. One of those has a, a ball inside. Not only an element, but a full ball, open ball. Okay. Um, so we have, we are not yet, unfortunately, we, we have found a constant rho. Sorry, rho and c probably will be the same. No? But we have not proven that uh, this ball is contained here, but this ball is contained in something larger, the closure. Hmm? Yeah, but it is, it, now to, if you want to, to, to eliminate, say, this closure, there is another argument. Uh, and so let, let me show you the second step. So this was step one. So now let us go to step two. So let me write down what we have proven up to now. There exists a constant rho such that we have this. And my notation was this simpler. Notation. Okay, well, so we have this. Now in the step two, step two is something like B rho ha f is contained in L to B. <coughs> Um, okay, so we, we uh, and of course, once, once we have this, we have concluded by taking C equal to rho over 2, say. Okay, this is the conclusion, right? Uh, so uh, we have to enlarge at least at, of the factor 2 in uh, this. So... And in this step, we will use, so I, for the moment, we have used completeness of the target. Now we will use also completeness of the source. We will use completeness of F, of E, in this step. Okay, so you see the proof is involved because we have really to, to use the deep completeness assumption in order to have the result. Now, the proof from this, it follows that L of B is dense. So this implies this assertion here. This L of B is dense in B rho F. OK? 
Okay. Um, so now we can, so what does it mean? Is dense in B rho F. It means that if we take, if we take a point uh, here, Y star, so let Y star be any point of this ball, we can find a point of B into B uh, at distance as small as I want, say, uh, so X1. Therefore, let, let me write it as follows, uh, such that the Y minus L of X1 is less, say, than rho over 2. Hmm? Rho over 2. Yes. Okay, so this is density. Given Y star, there exists X1. Okay? Now observe, however, that from this we also have the following. If I multiply by lambda positive and I take B lambda rho F, then this is then we have still this hmm? by one of the lemmas. Hmm? So if we multiply everything by lambda, this inclusion remains, but the lambda goes inside by one of the, two, one of the lemmas. Okay? And therefore we have also something more, not only that lambda B, L of B is dense in B rho F, but uh, L of lambda B, actually, if lambda is positive, F of lambda B is dense in B F lambda rho. Okay? By this conclusion. Hmm? And therefore, we can repeat this argument <coughs> Why star? Sorry. So we can repeat the argument, and now uh, we can. So we have a point in the ball of radius y star centered, so, sorry, or radius r over 2. So we can find x2 huh? So x1 is in B. This is this. So uh, and there exists an x2 such that x2 is less of 1 over 2. And y star minus L of x1 minus L of x2 is less than rho over 4. Okay. Exactly. Um, therefore, we can construct by induction a sequence of points such that Xn is less than 1 over, over 2 over uh, n minus 1 because you see here we have Two and here we have the power one, so two the n minus one, uh, and such that uh, y star minus l of x one minus minus l of x uh, n 
is less than or equal than rho over 2 to the n plus uh, 2 to the n. 2 to the n, thank you. 2 to the n, let me check, is it OK? OK. Inductively. Now, is it okay for the moment? Hmm? So let me repeat. How can I find this x2? Well, I apply this with lambda equal uh, 1 over 2. Okay. So with lambda equal 1 over 2, this is dense in this. Huh? But this is an element of that ball. So this belongs to B uh, F rho over 2. Huh? So this is dense. B uh, over 2 is dense in, into this. Therefore, we can find another element, x2 in the ball B of radius 1 over 2, uh, such that this new element minus this is less than, say, rho over 4. Is this OK? OK. Therefore, using induction, I can find such a kind of, uh, let me write it, this says, uh, obviously, so now L is linear, so this is equal plus xn rho to the n. Okay. Now, um, by construction, we have that this converges. Huh? by construction, because it is less than 2. Huh? OK. So now there is a criterion in Banach spaces that says, essentially, that if this converges, then also Xn converges. Do you know it? This com completeness criterion, essentially. It is also, the, the converse is also true. If you have the, this assertion, then the space is necessarily complete. OK? Therefore, Xn, so you, we use here completeness of E in this sense, in this sense criterion of force converge, for a convergence of absolute convergence of series, say. And therefore, Xn converges to, in, in E, converges to some X star hmm? by the completeness of E. By the completeness of E. Now we look at uh, at this, uh, and what about x star here? And x star is less than or equal than two. Hmm? The sum of x sum of xn converges to x star, and x star is less than or equal than 2. OK? Uh, therefore, x star belongs to L, uh, belongs to, to B, say. Maybe we also have uh, less than or equal than 2. Oh. 
to be, is this strict inequality? Maybe we have the strict inequality because we have the strict inequality here. Okay, so strict inequality here. So x star belongs to two b. Hmm? Now we look. We pass to the limit into this uh, into this um, inequality. Huh? X. This is converging to x star, and L is continuous. The norm is also continuous. Therefore, we can pass to the limit here and find that y star minus L of x star is necessarily zero. Huh? Y star minus L of x star is equal to zero, which is equivalent in the, since this is a norm, is equivalent to say this. Huh? And so this concludes because we have taken any point in the ball and we have found a point x into 2b such that this holds. Huh? And therefore, this is equivalent to say uh, this green conclusion. Okay, so you see, uh, eliminating the closure here is not so easy. Okay, and so this concludes the proof of the theorem of open mapping theorem, which is one of the basic theorems in functional analysis. Let us see some corollaries of this. Let me show you some corollary. Choose. So in step one, we have used uh, subjectivity only and completeness of F. In step two, uh, we have used uh, completeness of E uh, in the moment, yes, maybe not, maybe you're right. Strange, however. Oh, no, well, well, it's not strange if I want to write L to the minus 1 in the statement. Huh? If I want to invert it, if I want to write, so if I want in the statement write the symbol L minus 1, then I need, I need it, I need the injectivity. So that this is a one-valued operator associating the point to a point. Okay? Okay, so uh, the corollary is, one, one corollary is the following. So, uh, corollary, this is very interesting. You have, assume that you have a vector, sp uh, um, um, a vector space, such that if you have, such that it is Banach with two different norms, making E Banach. Hmm? And suppose that, suppose that uh, there exists a constant such that uh, this is less than or equal than this. Mm. 
then there exists another constant Namely, the two norms are equivalent. OK, in finite dimension, all norms are equivalent. But clearly, one of the big problems in functional analysis is that, in general, norms are not equivalent. But the, the strong, if, if you know that both the two norms make E Banach, then you have that the norms are equivalent. Hence, the two norms are equivalent. OK. Now, the proof is just a direct application of, uh, of the previous big theorem, because it's sufficient to consider the identity from this Banach space into the other Banach space. Hmm? The identity, you see, by assumption one, by one, okay, the identity is, a li is linear is bijective, of course, but assumption one says that it is also continuous. Hmm? It, between these two hmm, Banach spaces. Well, and then, by the previous theorem, the inverse, well, of course, it is injective, subjective, and so on. Uh, the, the inverse, which is still the identity, still the identity, mid, the identity is, uh, is also continuous which is exactly like to say is continuous, which is equivalent to say the thesis of the corollary, OK? So equivalence of norms. Maybe I can, I can also uh, leave you uh, as, uh, as an exercise home. So let uh, E equal a direct sum. So let E be a Banach space. X and Y closed subspaces. Hmm? This is the direct sum. It means that any element, the assumptions E equal X. Uh, says that means that any uh, e in e can be uniquely written be uniquely written as for
then the projections P are continuous. Try to prove by yourself this this theorem. Okay. Um, Okay, let, let us see other consequences. So this is home. Now let us see other consequences of this result. Uh, theorem, closed graph. So let uh, E and F be Banach spaces. And let be linear. So there is another criterion to see, to see whether or not L is continuous. So remember that L is continuous if and only if it is bounded. Not only this, there is another criterion. Then L is continuous. This is interesting. If and only if the graph of L is closed in, in this. So what is the graph? So the graph is clear. We know what is the graph. The graph is the set of all x, L of x, in E such that let's see in E okay uh, is, and now the norm that we put here close this this is uh, another vector space and the norm that we put it is Endowed with this norm. Endowed. Huh? Okay. Let us show theorem this, this result. So one implication actually is true without using any kind of open mapping theorem or close. Uh, or, but the other one is more difficult. So let us see the proof. So assume that L is continuous. Take a sequence of point uh, in uh, the graph. Let me write it uh, sequence of points in graph L. And assume that uh, they converge to something. Converges to x and y in uh, here. What does it mean, this? This means that xn converges to x with respect to the norm of E, and this converges to y with respect to the norm of f, because we have chosen this norm, OK? Well, now, um, but if xn converges to x, 
and L is continuous, then L of Xn necessarily converges to L of X. Uh, which is like to say this is because L is continuous but L is continuous then this and this is like to say that is in the graph So we have shown that if I have a sequence of points of graph of L converges to something, then something belongs to graph of L. And this is like to say that graph of L is closed. OK? No. Is it OK? What is the missing point? So take a sequence of points in this set. This is a linear subspace of the direct sum. Hmm? So, take a sequence of points converging to something in the norm, in the correct norm, in this norm. Huh? What does it mean that this is closed? It means that the limit belongs to the set. So, assume that this converges to something in this norm. But this means, by definition of this norm, that Xn converges to X in E. And L of Xn converges to Y in F. OK? OK. So, but since Xn converges to X in E and L is continuous, then L of Xn converges to L of X. OK? And therefore, Y is equal to L of X. Huh? Well, what does it mean, Y L of X? It means that the pair X and Y belongs to the graph. No. Yes, it's OK. And so, the graph of L is closed. Okay. So you see, this is very easy. I don't, I don't, I don't use any kind of uh, deep theorem here. Just uh, observe that I need this rather natural norm. One possible natural norm is this. Uh, conversely, assume that the graph of L is closed in E direct sum F. So, okay. So now I want to apply the, so the, the corollary. The corollary was saying um, uh, if I have, uh, okay, uh, let, me, let me define the following. So graph L is closed, therefore graph L is a Banach space. Oh, graph L is a subspace, first of all, is a subspace of e f, it is closed and therefore is a Banach space. Closed, hence graph L is a Banach space. Therefore I can consider the following map between two Banach spaces. Consider the map from graph L into E, okay, uh, which, which is defined as follows, okay. Okay, this is uh, uh, continuous. Well, well, the, well, first of all, it is linear. Huh? It is continuous. 
it is injective and it is surjective also. Hmm? So our, essentially our graph is something like this. This is E, this is F, this is our graph, which is a linear subspace of the, pro, of the direct sum, of the algebraic direct sum. So it projects down on E. It is clearly continuous because it is clear that the norm of X is less uh, huh? it is less uh, well it is clearly continuous. Well, since it is continuous, it is invertible, and so on, this means that also the inverse is continuous. Therefore, there exists a constant such that uh, x plus L of x is less than or equal than x. This is the opposite, this is the corollary. Eh? Corollary. Which says that L of x is less than or equal than c minus 1. Which is equivalent to say that L is bounded or continuous. Okay? Okay. okay. Now, just a few comments. A few comments on So remember, this is a criterion to check whether a, a functional, a, an operator, is continuous. So you, you have not only to check an inequality, you, you could check an inequality with proving boundedness, but you could also alternatively look at the graph. Okay, now some final comments. Some final comments. Um, it happened very often, very often, very often the operators, the operators are not defined as follows between two Banach spaces, but very often, actually, they are defined, but it happens that we are in the following situation. What does it mean, this? OK, L is defined in a linear subspace. Hmm? usually linear subspace of E with the induced norm from E. This is called domain of L. So it is not globally defined uh, on the whole uh, Banach space, but just in a linear subspace. The fact is that uh, you have to write this inclusion because you have to remember what is the norm. So on a linear subspace, you have the norm of the ambient space. So you write this. Example. Let me show you an example. Simplest example, but very interesting. So take E equal L1 of R, 
f equal L1 of R, uh, domain of L, say, continuous, maybe with compact support. Uh, considered as a subset of E. Huh? Or notice that uh, is this subset closed? No. Okay. And the operator is So you see, what is this operator? OK. This operator is clearly well defined for functions which are differentiable, but in particular for C1 functions with compact support. So this is well defined. Of course, it's not defined in the rule of L1, because we don't know what does it mean that the differentiating a function in L1. But we know what does it mean, what it means uh, differentiating pointwise a smooth function with compact support. So this is well-defined and necessarily here and not here. We look at C1C with the uh, induced norm for the moment. The image, so L of F, this is continuous with compact support, so in particular is in L1. Hmm? OK, so this is an example. So what is the graph? What do you think is, what, what, what is your definition of graph in this more, actually this is much more general than before. Eh? The previous case corresponds, we have studied up to now just the case of equality. Mm -hmm. But this is much, much more, more general. Okay, is this clear? I mean this small, apparently small modification is not a small modification. Eh? Okay. Uh, what is the graph? Okay. Okay. Try to show. Show that the graph of L is not closed. Hmm? Do you? Well, I can consider, take for instance this function f here. The derivative of this f is out of the points where it is not differentiable is just uh, 1 minus 1, 0. OK. This is f. Now take a sequence f, f, fn in the domain of your, your operator, which more or less are the following. Something like this. So something like, say, this. Hmm? So this is Fn. 
This is f prime n. So take the sequence fn, f compact support. So fn are elements of your uh, domain. Suppose that fn converges to the graph of fn, so to some uh, fg. Huh? What do we know? Well, fn converges to this huh? in L1. You see? And um, F prime n converges to this in L1. Hmm? But then it is clear that uh, F is not in the domain of, uh, of L, because it is just Lipschitz and not C1, for instance. Huh? OK, so the graph of L is not closed. But we would like, somehow, to force it to, to find a natural extension so that it is Closed. So let me give you the following definition. Or maybe, maybe uh, exercise home. So um, the closure, the closure of the graph is the graph of a linear map, linear map, if and only if the following try to show this. So this is a criterion to check whether or not this is a graph of something. And so we can give the following definition, that the operator definition L from DL is closable if the closure of the graph is the graph of a linear map, is a graph. Is a graph. Of course, again, the graph of L is a subset of E direct sum F where we use the usual norm, uh, the, sum, the sum of the two norms, as before. So when we talk about closure, we are considering that norm there, OK? OK. So and the theorem is, is that uh, that operator, the operator in the example, is closable. The operator is closable. So uh, the idea to show that it is closable is to, to use the criterion, this criterion here. Proof criterion. use the so and and the, the the idea is the following you simply have to take a sequence of function uh, so you have a point <clears throat> so a point in the closure so what does it mean you have a sequence take a sequence fn into your domain C1C, Fn converges to 0 in L1. Huh? 
And then you have that f prime of n converges to some element. Let me call it instead of y, let me call it just uh, uh, g. Hmm? And what do you have to show uh, using this uh, criterion is that g is equal to 0. OK. And so what do we do? So take a test function phi in C1, C, and consider Fn prime phi this, OK? Then what we know, this we can integrate by parts without boundary terms, because phi is compact support, and also fn is compact support. Everything is compact support. So integral phi prime dx hmm? minus. Now, what do we know? We know that fn converges to 0 in L1. Huh? And this implies that this converges to, to 0. OK. On the other hand, f prime n converges to g in L1. Therefore, this converges to g phi dx. Huh? We conclude that. Uh, the integral of g phi dx is equal to 0 for any phi c1, c. OK. And so and so what, what we conclude from this? That, that Okay, is almost uh, is almost everywhere equal to zero, and therefore this shows that uh, the operator is closable. Okay. Uh, well, from from this point, it starts the. The theory, of, the theory of generalized derivatives, Sobolev spaces, and so on. Uh, so we don't have time to do this now. But this is just maybe one starting point of Sobolev spaces. OK? Uh, well, uh, the next lectures we will, we will dedicate, I think, the remaining time. We have just three lectures only uh, to distributions theory. So to tomorrow and the, the next lectures we will study with some, some care, as far as possible, time permitting, distributions theory. Okay?